Mm. Hey, so so let's talk about the mental health system and, and care, and the, we talk about a mental health crisis. And I, but I, I suppose when I look at this, I think this is at the pointy end of having tried to get people help. So one thing that we talk about is the treatment gap. There's really not enough psychologists or psychiatrists uh, or, or other people. There probably won't be. We can't train them fast enough. Um, but even then, the model of care seems to be not appropriate. But then if you go into eating disorders, mm. it's virtually a user pay situation. And at least in New Zealand, you know, options that people have, they tend to go, to, I, I can't remember the name of the place, it's down in the South Island near where the, uh, near Hamner Springs uh, is, is quite a well-known place. And I know a young woman that went there and it literally costs hundreds of thousands of dollars. Ashburn? Um, yes. Is that, yeah. is that the one? Yeah. Uh, and yeah. and as I understand it, that's not uncommon. And people may go overseas to do that. Is that, is that your experience that people have done that? Yeah, 100%. 100%. I think um, there's a lot of people in the public system which are trained, which mean well, um, and they're awesome people and they're awesome professionals and they just want to help. But I think that they don't... They don't have eating disorder, like because because of the crisis which has happened, a lot of people have burnt out. So then, a lot of people, like there's people who get it and are trained in it, and there's people who are trained but they really don't understand or probably have the training they need to support people. And so, therefore, a lot of people, or there's this whole just get people weight restored and turn them over, and they don't do any of the long term work which is actually needed to be done. And so then people relapse. Um, and so you just end up with this cycle happening for people. Um, and a lot of people have probably given up on the public system, which is really sad. Um, and they're going to private places. Look, you can go residential, which is private, which costs people thousands every day. That's the fact. Um, residential, I think, is kind of where more people are at a crisis, like, and they're really needing that. 24 7 support and they can't get that at home um but again i haven't always seen residential fix like really like because i guess it institutionalizes people but then mm, they have to still, come you still out gotta go, you've got to go home and to you still got to go home and then they can't because they haven't done those things in their normal environment and there's often no follow-up support people go home and relapse um and so they really need if there is that there needs to be a really good follow-up plan, which a lot of these places are understaffed, under-resourced, so that doesn't happen. So people relapse and go back in. And you end up with this cycle of going back in, going back home, going back in, going back home, which is very real for a lot of people. Um, there's a lot of amazing private clinics, um, like you've got New Zealand Eating sort of Clinic, you've got Shelley Beach. Um, people go to Nurture as well, and I think there's this new practice as well in um, Parnell. I can't exactly remember what it's called with um, people who specialize in eating disorders. So a lot of people are going there, but even all of them have wait lists and they can't get in. Um, but those wait lists so, could literally be several months long, right, Jess? Yeah. And so if you think about it, if you think someone's already a low weight, parent, say a teenager, they're a low weight, parents don't know how to support them because you just don't know because it's like, you literally kind of have to go through like the treatment that they do at that age is you re as parents, you become tasked with refeeding, but how do you refeed your teenage daughter who's been feeding herself for ages? Um, and parents aren't equipped with it and they don't have an understanding. And so they literally just watch their daughter deteriorate and probably end up in hospital. Um, and it's so hard for parents, like parents are in just such this hopeless place. Like, I mean, even back 15 years ago when I had my eating disorder, there was a wait list there for the public service and I was on it. And my parents used to just ring in desperation, like, we need help, we need help. We're just watching our daughter just deteriorate and we don't want to lose her. So this is the real reality of a lot of people, um, whether you go public or private. And so people look over to overseas. There's a place in America which people go to which is residential, but you pay about $40,000 a month. Um, um, people do that because they're people, desperate, right? You don't want your daughter they to, do that. Or son people, to die. People sell their houses. Like parents sell their houses. Like they take out loans. They do whatever they can. Um, so, yeah, it's this really hard place of treatment at the moment mm -hmm. for a lot of people. And so, uh, what, what, so uh, if, you were, if you were coming into 
be a government in Australia or New Zealand, what would you do? What would I do? It's a good question. I would be obviously funding, um, like putting money like in things like day programs and training professionals, like making sure they have proper training and proper ongoing supervision and making sure that they can see people long term. I think another thing is people don't want to work in eating disorders because it's a hard field. Um, so that's the other thing. There is sometimes a lot of vacancies, but people just don't want to do it because it's a hard job. Um, and unless you have that kind of compassion, people don't do it. So there needs to be some sort of incentive for health professionals too sometimes. 